Megan Hutchinson is awesome, and we have her here with us tonight. Um, before we get into that interview, though, make sure that you subscribe to the page, follow Comic Book Women on Instagram and Twitter, and yeah, let's get started. So, Megan, thank you so much for coming out. I like that intro video. That is it's snazzy. Yeah. We're so happy to have you on. We are going to run this interview in two different segments. We're going to talk about some of your covers and then move into getting to know you type stuff. People in the chat are going crazy. They are so excited to see you. Everybody just loves Megan. Look at that. All right. So the first cover that we want to talk about, which Megan's a little embarrassed about. It was a while ago. Willow the Wisp. All right. So from yeah. what I've read about this, it's like a gothic Nancy Drew. Yes. Yeah, that was kind of our elevator pitch for it. So, um, you know, I made this book about five years ago, so I think I've grown a lot. It's hard to look at, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun to make. And I'm actually uh, kind of working on the, the sequel to it. That's pretty cool. Well, is it going to go into comics, uh, into comic books or is it going to be like a hardcover? Um, so the first, the first book is a graphic novel and it was 215 pages, which I don't recommend for your first book that you ever publish. Um, I thought it was going to have a nervous breakdown, but, um, I'm actually going to be writing them as novellas and then just doing like spot illustrations. Um, so that's just kind of like a fun side project that I have no time for right now, but hopefully in the future I will. That's awesome. Right. You've been busy. There's been covers coming out like your covers have been everywhere lately. You're just a rising star, which is another reason we're so pumped to have you. But this story, I thought, sounded very neat. I tried to get a hold of one. They're out of print. They're right? out of print. Yeah, we we actually sold out of them um, pretty quickly, and then uh, so this used to be with Arkea, and Arkea was bought by Boom, mm -hmm. and um, so we kind of got lost in that transition. So we actually uh, never had a chance to republish it. So if you have one, it's very rare and a collectible. Nice. So fancy. And I think there was some like free comic book day mouse guard that had like part of this in it. Yeah, we did a short story for free comic book day uh, the year that it came out. And uh, yeah, Archaea used to put out the hardbound free comic book day comics, which is insane. And I have two copies of that and that's also really hard to get. And um, you can like find on eBay for um, a lot of money, which this sounds ridiculous to me, but I, you know, <laughs> every artist is like, why are you looking at my stuff? Um, but yeah, they, um, it's a short story that we wrote about the raccoon that's in the book. So we actually made it specifically for a free comic book day. That's cool. I'm sure there's some back issue bin that has, oh, there it is. has it. Hopefully. Yeah. I'm, you can find them every once in a while, but they're kind of hard to track down because they didn't make that many again because you know it's hardbound so you know it's yeah. expensive challenge accepted <laughs> yeah <laughs> do it <laughs> all right and then here's okay this is one that i was watching some of your previous interviews and you talked a lot about rock stars beautiful yeah. cover oh thank I mean, you it's, yeah, it's this a lot of fun um so yeah this was like a image series that i did with joe harris and uh you know, it was about like the rock and rock and roll conspiracies. And it's this idea that all of those were true. And so the story kind of like bobs and weaves through like all the rock and roll, um, like all those fucked up stories that you used to hear when you were a kid. Like if you play the Beatles backwards, it's like hail Satan, <laughs> yeah. you know, and stuff like that. And like Paul McCartney actually died and they replaced him. And so, um, so that's kind of the premise of the book. And like the fact that like the, the music industry, like the rock and roll industry is controlled by demons. So it was, um, it was a lot of fun. And Joe Harris, who writes the book, he is a big music nerd. So uh, there's a lot of really fun Easter eggs in there. That's pretty cool. I think I yeah, I was looking, I was reading about it, and you were talking about how the demons in this book, you purposely put a little sparkle in their eye as an mm -hmm. homage to Sandman. Yes. Yeah. Because, I mean, that was supposed to indicate, like, we were trying to figure out, like, how to indicate, like, if someone is possessed by a demon or is a demon. And that's what we came up with. And it was because of Sandman because Sandman's the best <laughs> steal from the best, you know? Uh, yeah. I was watching that video. Um, that was it. Sci-fi wire. Sci-fi yeah. wire. That was so neat. You're one of those people. Like I, I don't understand 
that level of talent where you just, you're like, oh, this is easy. Look at now he's in water. And I'm sitting there thinking if I did that, it would just look like some random squiggly lines, but you're just like, you make it look effortless. When oh, you thank you. Draw. I'm, I'm really crying inside. Hi. <laughs> well, you look like, like you're having a good time, like so relaxed and it's just like having a conversation, you know, and just drawing away. <laughs> um, no, I think, well, because they did this during um, Comic-Con, so it's probably just hungover, actually, <laughs> is what you're seeing. <laughs> She's awesome. struggling there. <laughs> you mentioned that you were taught to kind of lean back while you're, while you're working versus honing in on it, mm -hmm. which I thought that was, again, very interesting. Um, helped with your OCD tendencies, right, with all the little yes. details and everything. Uh, Except now I work on the iPad and now it's even worse because now I'm like this on my iPad and you can zoom in. So I'm just like, Neh. so it's actually gotten worse. So uh, disregard everything I said in that video because I don't do any of it anymore. <laughs> You've evolved. Now you have I've to digressed. Do <laughs> I know. This is how not to draw with your iPad like this. Now that you're on the iPad, then it, it, it's, which one do you like better? It, I mean, actually still like drawing, you know, uh, pencil and paper, or is it easier for you to do it on the iPad? Or um, it depends. The iPad's a lot faster. And so, you know, like for my comics work, I usually do it all on the iPad. Um, so I had to do a sketch for um, Hero Initiative, which I'm on the board of. So if people don't know what that is, go look it up. Um, because they are an amazing group of people that help uh, comic creators. So I'm doing it. I had to do a sketch for this fundraiser and like I'm drawing it on a piece of paper and like I'm drawing it and I like tried to zoom in on it. And I was like pushing on the piece of paper and I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, oh my God. I'm like, this is a piece of paper. So it's kind of broken my brain a little bit because I work on the iPad so much now because I'm, I'm working on a and then image books. And so I'm doing interior. So I'm working on the iPad every day. So when I work on a piece of paper now, I'm like, I don't know how this works anymore. Like, <laughs> <what is this? laughs> so. That was the hero initiative that put up on that screen. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I'd never yeah, heard of that. Right. So they do, we don't have a union. Um, if I can get on my soapbox. So, um, Oh, Hey, that's me. What, what? Um, so <laughs> comic creators don't have a union. And so what we do is, um, like we all come together and we do like fundraisers and, you know, like uh, there's always auctions and stuff and people are auctioning off original art. And um, basically all the money goes towards pe for people who like need to have, um, you know, like cornea surgery or got really sick and like they can't, you know, do their monthly issues anymore, you know, because it is very stressful doing like monthly issues as a comic creator that so we just come in and, you know, we help them out with their bills and stuff like that. That's yeah. Usually I, I see them at a uh, comic conventions, like there's mm -hmm. always artists and, and writers who will set up and like donate or even in artist alley, there's times uh, people won't charge you, but they're like, Hey, can you donate to uh, the hero initiative? A yeah. Cool we put out the tip jars too. And so, you know, like people can just put a couple bucks in there and then all of it goes towards the heroes initiative. It's a nonprofit, you know. So all your money goes towards helping comic creators who need help. Okay. Also, okay. Now people, now you know. Whenever now you know. <laughs> now you know. Be sure to look for them. You know, and yeah. whatever you can donate. You know. Uh, yeah. That that'll be awesome. Wow, yeah, spread the news where I can. So there you go. And Barry in the chat that's said Hero cool. Initiative is my favorite comic book related charity. So yeah, that's again. Very happy to plug them in any way we can awesome. if you guys can help out. Great. All right. Thank you. Let's move on here. So up next, I think that was it that we were talking about for your previous covers, but you just launched. Oh, wait, no, we have one more little thing. The Metallica poster. Oh, Let's yeah. That was up. Fun. Yeah, we found this and I'm like, we got to bring this up. This is so cool. And it's give them a second to pull it up over on their screens. It was a poster. How did this come about? Um, so... Uh, Metallica was doing there. their world tour and they were just basically commissioning uh, different artists to do a different poster for each stop on their tour. And so um, they asked me to do one of their posters. So I got Estonia 
which is kind of awesome. It's very metal. But I grew up listening to Metallica. So this was like a yeah. huge deal for me. Um, you know, so I did a bunch of sketches for them and then they picked this one and then I I put it together and they tweeted it out and they put it on their Instagram, which was totally wow. surreal. Um, and it's silk screened too. So actually like the way it's designed like that, it's all silk screened. So if you actually get a print, they're at, on Nakatomi Inc. is the, the company that got the contract to farm all of this out. Yeah. And so they're all individually silk screened. They actually look really stunning in person. Wow. It's I love stunning on the words. screen. Right? It's very Just bright. <laughs> I mean, the, the girls on the side, I mean, that's a sexy, it's so, again, the colors are so vibrant. And I, I always look, that's always my thing anyways, looking directly at the color is the first thing that kind of catches me. Then I kind of slowly figure, oh, that's a girl standing there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it takes me a while to kind of piece it around. Yeah. yeah. It's, this is my satanic Lisa Frank poster. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, What's this one? So that, they Nakatomi does this really cool thing because they do they have to do test prints for all their silk screens, you know, because mine was like a six layer silk screen. So they do these tests and they run it through a couple of times to test out like what's doing what. And yes. they turn out really cool. So they'll sell these on their sites for like 40 bucks, you know, and it's poster sized. So you get these like really cool reprints. And so we actually have a couple in our house of other artists, um, you know, like they're kind of like fucked up reprints because they they look really cool. They come out completely randomly. Yeah. It makes them all unique. And yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's neat. I would hang that up. All right. Very yeah. cool. All right. So that was, oh, and here's the last one we want to talk about was the Valiant cover that you did. I like hot pink because I feel very uncomfortable coloring my own work. So <laughs> it's an easy way <laughs> to work around that. And I got called out for it on the internet once. And so I don't do it anymore. <laughs> Really? Oh, really? If yes. you like it, do it. Who cares? I like it. But now I work with a colorist that I love. So um, it just kind of makes my life a lot easier. But I do love hot pink, which is ironic because I only wear black all the time. But um, yeah. yeah, like hot pink and purple and, you know, like kind of all those like phosphorescent 80s colors I think are so sexy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't, I I don't really understand the whole colorist concept. Can you, I'm, I'm so, so ignorant in that area. Can you kind of explain that? So you draw out something, do you work with your colorist to figure it out or do you just give them the sketch and they take it from there? You know, it depends um, project to project. So uh, the colorist I work with the most is um, D. Cuniff and he's out of Ireland and uh, he cover, colors a ton of stuff. He's amazing. But sometimes I will, um, I'll just send him like, you know, I'll do the pencils and the inks. And then right. sometimes I'll just send him the file and just be like, go have fun. And then other times I'm like, or, uh, you know, like, I'll be like, oh, I really want this to kind of look like 80s-ish and use this color palette. And like, I was thinking this, or like, I'll send him like the character sketches and stuff. So he kind of has like a guideline, but most of the time I kind of let him do whatever he wants. Yeah. So that's him. He's, he's incredible. Um, I feel like you still have to have like almost like a, I don't want to say intimate relationship. We don't want your husband to hear that, but like a, <laughs> a, a connection with your colorist. So he they understand. His books too. Huh? <laughs> yeah. He colors right. my husband's books too. So we both have an intimate relationship with him. <laughs> nice. Hey. Hey. <laughs> but they have to be under, able to understand without you flat out saying it, what you're going for. That's I think true. that's kind of a cool partnership between the colorist and the artist. Cause you're both doing the same thing. You're bringing the character alive in your own way adding your own aspects to it. So, oh, wow. He is a badass. Yeah, he's amazing. Like well, and that's the nice thing, too, is that, like, you know, he's colored a ton of, I mean, obviously I started using him because Donnie, my husband, uses him on most of his books. And, um, you know, he, he understands, like, tone really well. And so, um, yeah. you know, you can kind of, like, as you can see in, like, all this redneck stuff, you know, like, he understands what's going on in the story and what like the art is telling him to do. And so like, that's kind of like what he does, you know, like he interprets that. So he's very intuitive when it comes to that. And a good colorist is, you know, they yeah, can kind of like I, I didn't interpret see much hot pink the there, Megan. He doesn't use much hot pink. <laughs> he does not. He does not. Unless I ask him to. And then he's like, oh, <laughs> okay. okay, I will. I'm just being an ass. All right. All right. <laughs> I love hot pink. 
that's okay. And you should be able to use it more because I think like it, it it gets you like, you know, well, for me, like in Laura, like we were saying, you know, like she was saying, like those colors, they grab you first and then yeah. you, you know, it's like, oh, what's here? You start seeing like the rest, you know, but I mean, I feel yeah. like when the covers are out there like that, it makes you want to pick them up more. So I think it's yeah. too hot pink. <laughs> and I agree with you. I think it's something we can come back to because I think there's like a new image that was released for Spider Venom, Gwenum, something that's like all pink and then her in the middle. And I'm like, okay, we can come back. Yeah. I oh, like the it. Gwenum versus Carnage book? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw that one too. It, the, the pink isn't as bright as this one. They probably could have gone brighter. They should have talked to Megan on that one, right? <laughs> I got I got your hot pinks. <laughs> all right for any of you who have been hiding under a rock this is the crossover cover that has just wiped out i mean it, it's been everywhere it's taken over everybody's like oh do you have the x-men homage one like i mean this is incredible so again how did you go about getting this piece together um so it really helps that i am married to the writer um and he and I, so I was approached by 616 to do a crossover variant. And I think they had how many variants? 60? Well, He's walking lot. out of the room. Oh, uh, how many variants did you have for crossover number crossover? one? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Like something around Retail 60. Exclusive. Yeah. Retail exclusives. We had, they had 16 variant covers. Oh, I know. Oh, um, I didn't realize it was that many. I knew there were a lot, but. Yeah. It was, yeah. And so, um. When 616, who I do a lot of my variant covers with, um, they asked me to do it, and I didn't really know what to draw. So <laughs> Donnie and I sat down, and he was like, you know what would be cool is if you did an homage cover. And we and he kind of presented that to me, and I was like, that would be so much fun because we can integrate, you know, all of, like, the other <clears throat> image characters that may or may not be in mm -hmm. the book. Um, <laughs> in it. I can't say anything. No, I mean no, it's not. Gonna that's not who it is, and I'm not going to get sued. And there's nothing. I, it's it doesn't mean anything. It's just. It just <laughs> I just wanted pictures. to use them. <laughs> we, it. That's subtle, so Megan. Funny. Very subtle. Was, oh God, I get in so much trouble. That's me too. Um, I, I get in that. so much trouble because, like, on panels and stuff, like I'll say things, and he's like, "You can't say that," and I'm like, "I." Sorry. It just comes out. Anyway. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm going to get in so much trouble. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm a reporter in this book. <laughs> That's me looking very serious and mispronouncing Brian K. Vaughn. <laughs> Was that on purpose? Was that on purpose? Yes. But then okay. we realized afterwards, I was like, you, like, phonetically, I wouldn't say it differently. It's just spelled differently. So, I don't know. The That's joke's still English, there. You know, your English language. I mean, like for me, I'm my second language. It's English, you know. And then yeah. it took me a long time to. I was, I mean, in class, like I was really bad in English class because the way <laughs> we in Spanish, the way you spell things is the way it sounds. And in yeah, English, it's phonetic. It's like freaking completely different. I'm like, what the hell? Where That's am ridiculous. I? Help. <laughs> so it's, you know, I mean, yeah, and I think I noticed, uh, I think he might have posted somebody else uh, somewhere else in the ward that he w won oh. or something. They misspelled his l last name too. So all the time. Uh, that's so funny. That's kind <laughs> of the joke, though. We did this on, he did that on purpose. He was okay. like, they're, they're buddies. And he was like, hey, that's Brian, cool. I'm going to kill you in my comic. And also, I'm going to spell your name wrong. <laughs> and Brian's like, that's hilarious. So. That's awesome. <laughs> What a cool, what a cool thing though. I mean, this is this cover just was it's fire. Everybody's trying to get it. I think it's sold it out a lot of lot fun. Things, right? Yeah, it, I mm, I think so. I think Bird City might still have a few left. You guys will have to check the site, but this one just Ooh. sold like crazy. Which again, um, it's pretty obvious as to why. And it's a really it's cool story. And it mm -hmm. has pink on it. Yeah. And it's got pink on it, but that's her <laughs> outfit. Well, <laughs> And this one has pink on it. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to be looking for pink now. Whenever I look at your covers, I'm going to try to find pink oh, just God. to make sure it's I'm never going to use them again. Um. <laughs> no, you have to use them. That makes it can become like your signature. You know, Megan Hutchinson. 
bright pink. So bright Ice pink. Cream Man, this again, another cover that just flew as soon as it was released. People <laughs> were just gobbling it up. Okay. Yeah. I love this. They, I mean, because they wanted to do, um, I don't, I think it was Image that wanted to do, uh, uh, what is this comic? Watchmen. Just casual. Um, <laughs> forgot like the biggest comic ever made. Um, <laughs> so they wanted to do like uh, Watchmen crossovers. And so we kind of like threw out a couple ideas. And obviously this one stuck because it's so ridiculous and amazing. And um, his ice cream cone is very strategically placed. And with somebody oh. with dirty mind, you know, right away, we kind of know, like, what's up, right? Well, Anthony had to explain it to me. He's like, Laura, this this cover was almost not able to go through because the ice cream cone was too subjective. And I'm like, what? Yeah. What's wrong with the cone? He's like, take a closer look, Laura. And so I'm like, yeah. oh. It's oh, dripping. It's dripping, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's dripping Megan. <laughs> That that so I'm fun. so shocked that image was like, yeah, this is great. I'm like, okay. Oh, wow. like, I didn't I, notice. I, I, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Um, <laughs> when, when I sent this to D too, and like I sent, so image, like they saw the, the inks before I sent it to D to color it. And they were like, oh, that's fine. I was like, okay. <laughs> and so I sent it to D and I was like, you know, like we're, we're doing like the famous panel from Watchmen. I was like, maybe make, the ice cream a different color like don't make it white and then he came back to me it was like it only works white and i was like all right <laughs> <laughs> you tried you tried we tried and they they approved it so hopefully none of them are watching it now i'm going like oh shit too late hot plate <laughs> i know it's already out in the world and you can't get it back yeah, it's, it's a done deal. Yeah, this cover is awesome. Again, I think 616 sold out. You might be able to. I'm looking for Anthony's signals if there's any available at Bird City. He's going like this. So there might be one available at Bird City Comics, but shit, Megan, your stuff just sells out. Yeah. Like, what the hell? I mean, everything that you put out, people just, it, it, it's amazing. It's crazy how fast this stuff is selling. She's like, I can't yeah. help it. Guys. I don't know. That's, that's a cool problem to have, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. I, have, uh, I have a question. I like to from, draw fun stuff. I have a question from on YouTube. Uh, uh, one of the guys, uh, Comics Fun, he's asking, how much freedom do you have with characters? Hmm. Oh, um... It depends on the client, actually. Um, most of the time when people come to me because I have kind of a distinct style, they'll let me do whatever I want. But then um, I've worked with some IPs that shall not be named here where, like, I had to do, like, eight, nine, ten, like, iterations of the character because it didn't look like the character hmm. that, like, specifically like the character. So, but for the most part, most people kind of let me do whatever I want. That's good with it so. yeah they do they're like just do your thing megan all right the last one that we or the next one we want to talk about i think we have two more here to get through before we get to the fun questions uh the next cover was homesick pilots i believe stand by while they pull that there nope wrong yep. one there we go there it is oh my god you're it's more wearing, hot pink and you're wearing the earrings right now oh yeah that wasn't on purpose <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Lucy, you're so, I, I would never have even, gosh, I don't know. I, so I noticed your earrings. I'm like, oh, those are cool. <laughs> and yeah, then I totally, I, I totally designed that. No, I was actually just wearing <laughs> these earrings today. It's like, how did you know? I didn't design the character though. So um, Casper Rindinger, uh designed the characters. <laughs> He's going to be so mad. I can't pronounce his last name. That's close enough. But, We're good. We're good. Um, you know, but he designed the characters like brilliantly he just maybe he copied my earrings i don't know maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe. i don't know <laughs> so what was the, oh, those what are was the process here yeah. though for this cover what got you to this point because again this is one that just sold out this was a lot of fun so um i think issue one just dropped like two weeks ago i want to say yeah. um so image actually sent me like the first three issues and I read all of them in one sitting and it's, this is definitely like one of my favorite series of the year. Um, really? And it's, it's great. I mean, it takes place in the nineties. It's a bunch of like, yes. Tell me how to pronounce his last name. He's going to be so pissed at me. Hold on. Wind oh, Wind Wind oh, Wind 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 Wind
Win- Wingard. You know, I lived in Norway. You think I would know how to pronounce <laughs> funny last names. Um, well, it's that fucking J. Yeah, Why is there a J there? It doesn't belong there. Because it's like Wingard. Win- win oh God! No. Okay. Anyway, I'm I think we're making it worse. <laughs> Moving on. I'm making it so much worse. Um, but his his art's incredible, and he does a lot of stuff with bright pink, and he doesn't get shit for it. So, but he's you know mm-hmm. he embraces it. Um, the whole comic is colored in these like purples and pinks and blues because it takes place in the '90s, and it's a bunch of um like punk kids that are in a band that are in foster care. And it's, so it's just like, it's like super fun nineties. It's like my whole thing. Cause I grew up a grunge kid. Hmm. Um, yeah. And it's a haunted house. And that's all I'm going to say because everyone needs to read this book. It's I love haunted amazing. Houses. Me too. I'm obsessed. I have a ghost tattoo on my arm cause I'm obsessed with ghosts. And um, this was just a lot of fun. And like, I just fell in love with the characters. They're so much fun. Um, so we just kind of like wanted to do something where it was just them being them, you know, they're all like so unique. Their characters are all so unique and so lovable and kind of assholes in their own way. And they're amazing. So I just wanted to do something with that. And then I think someone asked about the tags in the background or the Easter eggs eggs on the background. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So Donnie did those because I wanted to do like, obviously like the big, the, the big guy in the background with like the, the title and stuff that was me, like, and that's part of the book, but I just wanted some like graffiti. And so I just handed it to him and I was like, draw some stuff. Um, and I posted it and most people got what everything was, but yeah, I don't you know. Do you a little over bit of research and you'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to explain them or should I just make people do their own homework? Yeah, their explain homework. them. No, no, do, do one of them. <laughs> at least one of them. Okay. I don't know one. I'll do the one that people were the most confused about. Yes. Which is yes. The, the EH um, plus RL mm-hmm. on the, um, like, right below the, the title. Yeah. And um, – those are the main characters from Crossover. So it's Ellipses Hell and then uh, plus Ryan Lowe. So those are the two characters. That's cool. But every Everything else I think you guys could probably figure out. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to do a so. little bit of homework. But yeah, very cool. Again, I think 616 sold out of this one as well. <laughs> like a trend tonight. This one sold out. Um, <laughs> Anthony, where, what's the signal? Does Bird City have this? Bird City has it. So you can go to birdcitycomics.com okay. and snag up a few of these while you hey. still can. Best. And then moving yeah. on to, this is the big one that we want to talk to you guys about. This just released last Saturday, I think, right? I think so. Yeah, um, okay, was- Megan, you killed it on this. I have seen <laughs> several variants of this book, and this one by far is my favorite. And it's not just me. You hear that same opinion just echoed across the comic book world. Where was your mind? You're just in a draw, and you're like, oh, I know. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to fucking Ronald McDonald this cover. Actually, that was, so uh, we wanted to uh, like do scary clown shit, and I grew up on it, so I love scary clown shit. And so oh. I was talking to six one six about it, and we're like, "Yeah, let's do scary clown shit." And um, actually, John at six one six was like, um, "Can we do like a scary Ronald McDonald?" I was like, "We're we gonna get sued." And so we 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 actually put this past image, and image was like, "Yeah, that's fine." So we're like, "All right, <laughs> we're gonna do it." Ronna's, Ronald McDonald is terrifying. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Right. Like, like when we were kids, none of us liked Ronald McDonald. He was nope. absolutely terrifying. So we just had fun with it. Um, you know, and then I listened to a lot of podcasts about serial killers. So I just used my knowledge <laughs> and, you know, added the, you know, free hugs and bag of candy. And, but you know, I love the guy hanging behind him. Like I was like, we have to have something in the background. So <laughs> I love it. It's so creepy. Like it's he's either with Ronald or he's about to kill him or something. I don't know. I I, I just love he's, that guy in the back. He's he, so I mean, I don't know if you can tell. He has no legs. Yeah, is he hanging? Yeah, he's hanging. Oh shit! I didn't even he's notice. That. I didn't notice oh, that either. I haven't seen it in print, so I don't know if it printed out too dark. But oh, I, yeah, whatever. I it's creepy. It 
Because the cannon it's looks hanging. like it's part of the slide, but now I see yeah. it. It's hanging oh. from the slide. Oh, oh. It's oh, subtle. Oh, oh, the hand in the back. It is, it is fire. I think um, you took that, you took the John's, like, let's use Ron McDonald, and you just, you did great with it. And like uh, mm-hmm. Jen was pointing out the candy bag, I didn't even notice the hand falling out of it until she yeah. said something. I'm like, this cover has so much going on that you really, like, again, <laughs> The guy hanging in the background, you've got to pay attention. Otherwise, you miss something horrible. Yeah, yeah. it's supposed to be really fucked up. So actually, um, yeah. so I took, thank you. <laughs> I like, I don't know if you know this, I like horror stuff. Um, but I, I was actually doing this at my parents' house. So I took a road trip with my mom and drove back to, I'm from California originally. And so we did a very safe COVID road trip. And, but I was stuck there. Um, because we didn't know how to get me home safely, uh, because there was like a resurgence. So I was working on this at their house and my mom, you know, was like walking by and she's like, Oh, what are you working on? She just looked at him. She was like, Oh, darling. <laughs> you know, if you were my mom's daughter, you will be her favorite daughter. Just. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I love your mom. My mom thinks I'm really weird and fucked up. She's like, darling, why do you draw these things? She's my family, South African. She's like, I don't understand. Why do you draw all these horrible things? I'm not, I mean, she named my little sister uh, Samara because of the girl from the ring. My brother is uh, Jason. <laughs> Jason. Your mom is uh, awesome. Uh, I. I, for the longest, I hated clowns because when I was little, I, I was like maybe, what, three years old, I think, and she, we watched it, and then later on for my birthday, she got clowns. She thought it was funny. Um, Hilarious. So, yeah. I, You're traumatized, but it probably was funny at the time. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> she was young. And now I, I, I get scared, but I love it. I love watching scary mo- movies. I love hearing about ghost stories and it is yeah but i mean i still get really scared but she yeah. loves it she, she can watch scary movies with the lights off at midnight she's cool that's she, awesome your she mom lives sounds in a haunted house right now so <laughs> what i'm so jealous megan's like that's good parenting right i know <laughs> terrify well, your yeah, children yeah. scar them while they're young and you're, you're set all yeah, right my, dog, my dog's getting caught on the table yeah no exactly wait what kind know, of dog they're, Prepare them for life. Uh, I have a beagle. Oh. Oh. I can let me see if I Batsy, come here. Batsy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love the name Batsy. <laughs> Bats. This is Bats. Oh, oh. so cute. Say hi. hi. She's oh, eight oh months old. God. She's our oh, little COVID baby. baby. <laughs> COVID baby. Batsy or Betsy? <laughs> hmm? Is it Batsy or Betsy? Oh, it's Bats, but we call her Batsy. Nice. She's named Bats after um, Dr. Strange's dog is Bats. It was on one of Donnie's runs of Dr. Strange. He has a ghost dog named Bats. Nice. <laughs> oh. That's super cool. Wait. Hello. All right, guys, if you are just hopping in, um, first of all, shame on you because you missed the first half of the interview with Megan Hutchinson. You'll have to go back and rewatch it because she's proven that she is as badass as her covers are. So make sure you go back and check it out if you missed the beginning. But now we're gonna shift gears a little bit. We're gonna oh, we're gonna reveal the real Megan. Let's let's talk Megan for a while. We already covered the art stuff. We we established you're great at it. But we have a couple questions for you. Okay. okay. First up. All right, Megan. Wait. Are you ready? Wait, Lucy had a question. Oh no, because uh, they had I I just started a YouTube channel not so long ago, oh. and I have people over talking about goals experience. <laughs> <gasps> I love that shit. So that's my favorite. Uh, if you ever listen to mine, it's uh, my sister-in-law. Hers, it's the creepiest one. I just had her uh, this past weekend. She made uh, clothing for dead people. It's freaking that's amazing. And, uh, yeah, it's so crazy. I love it. And she was telling us a little bit that she has a ghost uh, at her job, and she was telling us a little bit about it. That's- and. My, I'm so my jealous. Sister, yeah, my sister in law, she, I'm telling you, I love all this gold stuff too. <laughs> and, Wait, I'm going to find your YouTube channel. Yeah. And I, uh, 
If the one with Erica, you need to listen to that one. Her stuff is scary. <laughs> Wait, well, you I love that shit. For dead people, is that what you yeah. said, Lucy? Yeah, yeah. I don't. What does that mean exactly? Like, um, I guess she does. They send her after people die, uh, or before they before they die, like they pick what they want to wear to get buried, and she makes mm -hmm. it. Like she says, she, oh, she makes the okay. clothes. It's crazy. <laughs> It's fun. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I know. But, but yeah, in this Saturday, uh, uh, 7 p.m. Pacific time, I have another guy that he's going to tell me about his goals experience. So I'm excited yes. for that one. <laughs> okay. I'm, I subscribe That's, to your channel. I'm going to watch uh, it. My mind's just blown. What would you want to get buried in? Like a, you I should, know. You know, I, what I seen, it was like uh, older clothing, uh, like hmm. from the sixties or things like that. That's mostly what she makes. That's what I noticed. Oh, that's so cool. I know. <laughs> okay, Laura, um, do you want to move on? Thanks, baby. Oh uh, yes. Okay, sorry. Anthony's in the background here. Our mics are being a little odd. We're just having like so many technical difficulties today. I told so, you it's the first, new moon. It's that I, new moon. I believe that. I genuinely believe that. We're made out of mostly like water, right? So the moon can mm -hmm. just like throw all of our auras off. And there was an eclipse yesterday, so it's all fucked up. <laughs> See? So it's not really our fault, right? It's just – It's not our fault. No. <laughs> bucket list question, Megan. What is one of the things, preferably your main thing on your bucket list, that you want to have done before you die? Uh, <laughs> oh, God. It has to be like – it has to be like, you know, something that you have to have done. Like, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to visit the pyramids. I've already decided that's happening. Oh, that's a good one. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, shit. You really put me on the spot with that one. Yeah, oh, my time. God. Take it over. I have so many. Um, <laughs> that I have to do before I – oh, God. There's so many. Um, Throw some couple, uh, couple of them that you, you want to do. The, I don't know how appropriate they are. Um, Go to space. I want to it. <laughs> Well, it my, my my number one bucket list thing is is going into orbit, but I kind of resolved myself to like not doing that while I'm alive, and so it's actually like in my will that I have to be cremated and then shot into space in a capsule. So, that's, but that's not really a, a bucket one. list. Thing. <laughs> but they have those like I, I heard that they were trying to make uh, they have those like really expensive ones where you can like go into orbit and then come back down. But the, like the, the vomit rocket where you go, like you experience there it is. Yeah. 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 Oh, maybe oh, I should that do that. So cool. <laughs> I'm imagining that's like crazy expensive, right? Yeah. It well, can't, it I mean, has to be. Here's, here's the hope in our lifetime, <laughs> they have like a spirit airlines type of a thing where we can go into orbit and be like, oh, we did it. And then come back down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's all I want. I just want to go into outer space for, a few minutes. I also want a robot body. Okay. See, again, all these are really bucket list things. Cause it's like, I don't know how feasible they are. Cause it's like, I want to download my consciousness into a, ro a robot body, but is that oh, a really a bucket like list thing? Upload? Just like the, that show upload. Have you seen that show? Oh, no. Yeah. Is that what that's about? On Amazon? Yes. You have to oh, watch okay. Amazon upload. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. I'm obsessed with like the singularity and, and all that shit. Okay, I'll have to watch that for sure. I think so. I think that counts. Yeah. That counts. So going off into space, being In shot a robot body, a robot body, and having yeah. your consciousness down. Those are all fantastic bucket Get list items. Robot. I'm not sure how tangible they are, but they're. I just don't know if they're for this lifetime or maybe for my next one. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, uh, but like as far as things go now, I would really like to go to Japan. <laughs> no, see, that's a good one. There you go. That's a, that's an easier one. It's probably more obtainable. I know. I'm just like, how many of these things can I actually do? Um, and my my family, we're all divers. We go diving all the time. And so my parents actually travel around the world and go diving. So there's a couple dive spots that I would like to hit up. If, we're, if we have to talk about like realistic things <laughs> that I can actually do, then I guess like that would be good. <laughs> no, that's that's. That's a solid answer. I, I think that those are all great. Uh, okay, Lucy, um, I think we already know the answer to this, but do you want to ask her yours? Your favorite holiday. <laughs> um, Halloween. And I got, I was going to say Valentine's Day and I couldn't because 
my brain short circuited. I actually got married on Halloween. That is so cool. So <laughs> Did we're you really? Super nerds. Yeah. What if I was oh. like Arbor Day? <laughs> I love Arbor Day. <laughs> I do love trees. So well, let's trees are in all of your, all your drawings have trees, so that would have made sense. Yeah. You know, your love for trees. Were, oh, there you Aww. go. You know, oh my gosh, you, you marry in the black dress. I don't know. I don't know why. We <laughs> decided to go traditional. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, but you know, like we coordinated, so I had like black hair, white dress, and he had white hair, black. Oh, See? that's nice. That's cool. And I like your 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 flowers. You your traditional them. skulls and your flowers. Your traditional skulls. So we got married in Italy and they don't really celebrate Halloween in Italy. And so everyone was just like, oh, this is like an American thing, right? And I was like, you guys should put it's it's awesome. <laughs> put skulls yeah. on everything for Halloween. You should say it's a Mexican thing, you know? <laughs> and then they won't say anything, right? That's after, right? Do you think uh, that's more November close? For, yeah, November yeah. for yeah. Yeah. But I mean it's close enough, right? <laughs> and even though his lapel had like a little skeleton <laughs> hand. Did you guys see it? The what? Yeah, it's, I did see it. I okay. think that's all, the men, all the men had their little skeleton hands and uh Yeah, there it is. There it is. Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. Those are gonna sell cool. out on Etsy tomorrow now. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. That's what's gonna happen. All right, Jen, you're up. Uh I was curious what your most interesting, unique uh, commission has been that someone's asked you for. And you're like, hmm, okay, I'll do that for you. Um, I used to, not so much anymore, but when I was first starting out, I used to get a lot of um, commission, asking permissions for like really weird, uh, like sexy, sexual things, which made Ooh. me feel really uncomfortable. But I mean, it wasn't like anything like overt. It was like, can you draw Jean Grey we not wearing shoes, standing in mud? You know, it's like, I know what you're going to do with this drawing. Um, oh. Oh, what the? It was never anything like overtly sexual, but it was like, like you know very, that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But I don't really get those so much anymore. But my favorite, one of my favorite commissions that I ever was asked for was when I was first starting out and someone asked me to draw um, President Washington eating a bowl of cereal, kicking a deer in the nuts. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's so, that, my right? favorite. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, oh yes, the the old Jenna Washington serial nut kicking <laughs> mission. <laughs> Absolutely, that's my second one this week. Um, no, that was the weirdest. I was just like, okay, it's like if I had a nickel, right? <laughs> I know, I know, I'd have um, one nickel. <laughs> nice. That was definitely the weirdest, the weirdest one I've ever gotten. All right, a, a couple more here, then we'll let you go. I promise. But I have to know, what is your comfort food or your guilty indulgence? Like mine's cinnamon rolls, love them. But like, what do you? What's your food? Your food craving when you're just like having a rough day or whatever, and you need to have a guilty indulgence. What would it be? Um, I love sushi. Oh my gosh, I can see food. Anthony's in the back nodding. Sushi yeah. says too. Yep. That's my that's like my comfort food is sushi. Um, and I never get it because Donnie says that sushi is not a real meal. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like a snack, right? That leads yeah, to Yeah, exactly. Food. He's like, Yeah, but can we get real food afterwards? Oh so, um, <laughs> so I never get it. So it's like a treat for me. I'm uh I'm not making him sound like an asshole, but you know, uh <laughs> I it's disagree. Okay, it's cool. <laughs> I just did. But like comfort food wise, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I I grew up on South African food, so there's a dish we have called babuti. Tony is correct. I know most men agree with him. They're like, we can go have sushi, but then we have to go get like McDonald's afterwards. <laughs> oh my god, it sounds like my husband. I know. I feel like that's most men because like all my best friends, all their husbands agree. They're like, yeah, I know. And I'm like, I just want sushi. That's like all I ever want. But um, yeah, there's a lot of like South African food that's like very um, comforting. Yeah, babuti is like a curried meat dish that you, you eat. And that's that's like, I don't know what the equivalent would be. And it's like a casserole thing. Yeah. I don't know. It's very comforting. 
It sounds it's very good. warm. It's yeah. All right. I, I like that. <laughs> I feel like I'm failing all these questions. No, no you're doing great. These yeah. these are perfect. These are actually very um the chat's going crazy. Everybody's just loving it. So okay. uh, Lucy, you had another one you wanted to ask. Okay. Uh after like how do you take I mean, obviously, you know, because you're an artist, how do you take care of your hands? Like or in your back? Like what do you do? Like and her after- eyes. Yeah, like after a long oh, yeah. day of drawing and, you know, I mean, you said like your back, like if you're hunching or like your neck, what do you do to uh, treat yourself <laughs> for comfort? Um, I don't do it well enough, but every, like even writers and stuff will complain about like their hands and their backs and stuff. But um, this is to be serious. Um, I, so I, I actually wear those glasses, the, the blue filtering glasses that are so you don't tire out your eyes. And then um, I do yoga and I take turmeric. Nice. And I do acupuncture. And I do like the massage balls and like roll out Mm -hmm. on my back and stuff. Cause yeah, like at the end of the day, I mean, it just, I I work standing up mostly, but it's still, it's just like, you're so you're, it's a lot of body fatigue. And, um, and it's, it's important, you know, for like, people who want to work in comics and people who do work in comics, you have to take care of your body because it will, you're, you know, like I know Donnie suffers from sciatic from, you know, just sitting and writing and like, he'll get carpal tunnel and stuff. And it's just like, you really got to take care of your body. You know, you got to watch for these things. I mean, do you have like a special exercise for your hands? Like when, as soon as you're done, like right away, like do something probably like you're, I don't know, like you're, you I do. Or yeah. Um, I, I do yoga, mm. you know, cause there's a lot of, you know, like stretching and like pushing down, like pressure on your hands and stuff. And that usually fixes it for me. And like, I've noticed, like I've been having back problems this week and it's because I haven't been doing yoga. So, but you know, some people don't like yoga. I know Donnie takes baths every night and that helps his. I was just going to say that. Oh my gosh. Both the, the boys are all clapping. They like that comment. <laughs> Donnie I love that. the boys. Yeah. But I mean, so many, like, it's so funny because like all these writers at Marvel, they all take baths and they all talk about like their bath salts and stuff that they hmm. use. Yeah. You dump the Epsom salt, salt, the Dr. Teal stuff in there and you just yeah, soak yeah. for like 20 minutes and your muscles are like, boom. I have yeah. a sign by my bathtub that says this is my happy place. And it's, it's legit. Um, like you should start taking baths. I highly recommend them. I need to. It just seems like a lot of work. Hot. To sit in a bath? <laughs> you just, you just it, it, right? You have to prepare it, right? Oh yeah, CBD like, salt. Stuff ready. It's like uh, yeah. No, it just because like I I can't sit still. I'm not good at it, which is why I like doing yoga because it's still like relaxing and stretching. But I can't yeah. be doing stuff like I cannot sit still. And like when I sit still is when I fall asleep at night. Hmm. Oh my gosh, everybody is just going crazy in the chat. This is fantastic, Jen. This is You're the like, final this one is a <laughs> No, they're all they're loving, really it. loving it. Loving it. Perfect. Yeah. On Facebook and YouTube, everybody. I, I was so going to ask about the investor call, like what you're looking forward to for MCU and Star Wars. But now I'm actually really, really curious about like, what's your like, because I know you, you've been a fan of things since like the 90s, like X-Men, but like, what's your like, you like your wish list of like top thing that you wish you could like work on for like Marvel, DC, etc. for like, a character or group that you would like, I would love to do a cover or maybe even like the interior. Oh, that's a heavy yeah. one. Um, I wish I'm I- actually, uh, people know this about me. Like I'm, I want to write and draw Swamp Thing real bad. Um, but as far as like stuff for the MCU, anything in the magical realm. And I actually would really like to do like a Mephisto story and like any of that kind of, there we go. That's right. That's my boy. Um, oh my gosh. We need to get you on a cover ASAP. <laughs> that would sell oh, out. That is gorgeous. Let's, and you got your trees well, going. You. So we know it's a Hutchinson yeah. cover. This yeah. is, this is fantastic. Thank you. Um, yeah. I just love, I love trees and um, he's kind of dark and fucked up. And so I think it would be a lot of fun. And um so let's just put that on the universe and maybe something will happen with it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, either that. And then like in the, in the MCU, I love all the magic shit, you know, and like anything to do with um, anything to do with the devil I'm into. So 
I guess you do any of that stuff. Mephisto. But like as like a dark comedy, you know? Like, like um, what's his name from Curb Your Enthusiasm? Larry David. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's so funny. I don't think Marvel <laughs> would go for that. Maybe. Maybe like, okay. I mean, look, with all the TV shows they have coming out, like, they could totally do, like, a comic like that. I think yeah. so. I mean, like, the success, we were just watching Endgame last night, again, for, like, the 20th time. And, um, you know, what sells all these movies and, like, what has made, like, the franchise so strong is, like, the humor in it, you know? And I think people were really receptive to it. So I think it would be fun, you know? Like, still make it, like, dark and fucked up and, like, comic booky, but also have it be really weird and dark comedy. It's really good. Come on. Right? Fingers no, crossed. I'm I'm no one steal my out. idea. Yeah. <laughs> People in the chat are saying, make the trees hot pink. Done. There we go. Then, I then like the way you think. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, so million Lucy. copies. <laughs> exactly. Lucy, Jen, do you guys have anything to add before we let her go? We kept her longer than we were supposed to. Sorry. I know. I know. You're all good. Keep yapping over here. <laughs> I know. It was, it was a little bit of a rough start, but we got there. All right. Well, you guys, make sure that you check out Black M underscore art. That is Megan's Instagram page. Um, we have her website. What was the website again, Megan? It's um, blackm-art.com. Can you buy like um, OAs or anything off there? Uh, no, actually, I took my store down right now because I'm revamping it. I'm actually going to be announcing in the new year. Uh, I'm going to be doing like original art and uh, original prints. So I'm redoing my whole store. So that'll be coming out. So just follow me on social media. I'll announce it. So hopefully that'll be coming out like February, March. Uh, I'm going to snag up as much as I possibly can before you become so big that I can't get a hold of it anymore because it's, it's already just flying off the shelves. I know. I'm just... It's true. Stop I'm just girl fanning over here. <laughs> but anyways. Stop um, it. <laughs> but don't, don't keep going. Make me feel better about myself. <laughs> you're, doing, you're, you're just amazing. We're so thrilled oh, to have had you on. Yeah. The girls and I sincerely appreciate it. We hope we can get you on again soon. Um, yeah, so that's it for Megan for tonight. Thank you again for joining us. We appreciate it so much. We'll let her go. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Bye, Megan. Oh. Oh my gosh, she's so good. I loved her. What do you guys think? Oh, she's amazing. Yeah, I, I love it. I'm and telling you, she could be my mom's favorite child. <laughs> she's amazing. I've never seen the chat this engaged. Everybody loves her. And then I forgot to ask about her WonderCon Armstrong cover. I'm like, oh. dang it. We'll save it for the next one. We'll get her on again and we'll save it for the next one. But yeah, for those of you in the chat, I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as we did. She's incredible. And make sure you're following her on Instagram and follow you know, follow her on Twitter, right? Twitter was the other one? Yeah, Twitter. Yeah, very, very cool. All right, to wrap up the show, we don't have a ton of time, so we'll make this pretty quick. Uh, we want to discuss some of the stuff that Disney was covering during their Disney Investor Conference. Jen, what's this one? So Rescue Rangers is getting a slash live action show, but then also I think with either uh, cartoon or uh, computer animation. So it seems like a mixture, kind of like a Space Jam from like what I got from that... Uh, Call. Oh, that would be very. When is it supposed to come out? This is all for 2021 or later. Uh, they didn't give an exact date for this one that I saw, but it's just it's it's on the docket. It's coming. It's it's coming. Yeah, I remember growing up with this stuff, so definitely one I want to tune into. And John Mulaney, who is it for Chip? Uh, John Mulaney, the comedian. Oh, Ooh, yeah, yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah. All right, so that was the first one. The next one we have coming up was Encanto. This is the one that I am pumped about. Um, yeah. Is that Moana? Yeah. It looks like Moana, but huh. it looks like Moana, actually. But the person in the, in the, in, in the foreground and that's closest to us looks like it's the girl from Encanto. Okay, so maybe the one in the front is Encanto. And they're channeling it? Yeah. Huh. It's, a, it's a Colombian uh, with a, that Miranda guy from, um, oh, man. He did that Broadway thing that was really popular. How, how, Hamilton. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, he could be in it. Yeah, he's, he's, the he's, music, he's right? doing the the music for it, I believe. Oh, that's very cool. So this is um another Disney movie that's coming out, and we don't know when yet, though, right? It's just they're they're giving us the Disney Investor Conference just gave you little snippets of what's coming out. Oh, there you go. We'll write the music for Disney Encanto, Lin Manuel Miranda, mm -hmm. which means it's probably going to be. 
huge. Yeah. yeah. All right, when you showed me the pictures from the conference, I mean, you look at the colors automatically. Super bright. Yeah. And then it's the people from uh, Zeus Utopia are also working on it. Lucy, what do you think of this? I'm excited for I'm I'm really excited another like, you know, oh. Hispanic uh, cartoon, you know, coming to Disney. That's amazing. I mean, we had um uh oh my goodness. We just I can't believe what's his name? Uh, Coco? Miguel? Coco, yeah. <laughs> and now like we're having, you know, uh Encanto, so that's pretty oh, man. exciting. Oh, Coco at the end scene where she's like Papa. Oh man. Did that make you cry? Uh, yeah, I was like, we were all crying. <laughs> Anthony was crying. Like, Anthony yeah. was like, <laughs> it was, yeah. yeah. Oh yes, that yeah, it had us crying like babies. And you know what? We watched it. Uh, it came out, and then we didn't watch. You know, we didn't really watch it. Uh, and uh, the day be when we watched it, it was because the next day they were gonna show it at my son's school, and we're mm -hmm. like, we heard everybody cry about it. So I'm like, let's. Watch it now, cry now, so we don't have to cry at my son's school. <laughs> Watching yeah. it with the entire school and crying. I still cried, but yeah. it wasn't as much as, you know, as how much I cry when I watched it the first time. So I'm sure this is going to make us cry too. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a gorgeous teaser. Okay, Baymax, uh, another movie that makes you freaking cry. Baymax from Disney, man. Yeah, I mean, so the premise of this is, so Baymax, uh, his like main protocol is to help people. So each episode is him helping somebody either physically or I think mentally they have it also, like just to have like, a better day. And that, that's, I mean, look, we haven't seen him since the movie. Like, and I know there's comic books. They have and, and, like, short but, stories, don't they? Mm -hmm. like, um, yeah. yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah, this will be a good one. It was a solid movie. Um, I remember watching this with the kids and it just... Kind of like what Megan was saying, actually. I think that this is kind of the future, being able to have more robotics brought into the world. And it might be a gentle way to ease it into a child's uh, consciousness to have mm -hmm. robots being around and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of getting conspiracy theory-ish, but... It's okay. You know, yeah. you know. So, okay. Oh. Hocus Pocus 2. Mm -hmm. so freaking excited for this. I mean... We've been waiting for this for so long, you know, and they've been talking about it and it's finally freaking happening. Like when though, when is this happening? They didn't say, right? They didn't say. So. Yeah, they didn't say. Um, I, but we know it's coming now. There's no longer like a, we hope it's a, we know. And it's just a matter of one. Yeah. I, I think yeah. I, I assumed one of these women would have leaked something, but there's been, it's been sealed about when this is coming out. But for those of you out there, most of you, I'm assuming this is a childhood movie. We were talking to Megan about it prior to the interview. And she was just saying that, you know, this is something that we all kind of grew up with. So yeah, uh, we're definitely looking forward to that one as well. Hold on. Mm -hmm. What else? Oh, man, this is a lot. Uh, Moana too. Uh, Moana is getting, I think, a TV series. Oh. Uh, and then the rebooting uh, Through Men and a Baby. Oh, I'm so excited. For and this. then Jackson is getting a continuation. Is it, it, it's it going to be because the guy who was the main guy in this passed away, right? So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like animated? Percy Jackson? Yeah. Which one? The main guy who played he died? Percy Jackson? Yeah, it was like a freak accident or some shit like that. Or was it that Wait, guy what? Guy? Was that him? No. Really? I'm pretty sure it was him. Unless I'm confusing. I'm not sure if I'm more shocked about the news or the fact that Lucy knows something that Jen doesn't. I don't. I, oh my God. I know something. What is Jen, happening? No. Jen, you don't know this? Oh, hold on. Let's, let's cool. save her this moment. Yeah. Are you Percy Jackson died? Yeah. Crazy. Percy Jackson. Cause I'll, I mean, I'll let look it up. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to like, yeah, like nobody in the chat saying anything. So if you guys know anything about whether or not an actor from the Percy Jackson movie passed away, let us know. It's been too long since the first Hocus Pocus could go either way. Barton, I kind of thought the same thing. And I okay, feel like, never we... mind, not him. Sorry. Okay. Wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Okay. It's another Lucy, actor from Lucy, one of those Lucy. movies. <laughs> Lucy, read the, read the comment. Lucy, what's he making? 
<laughs> I am making shit up, guys. Sorry. Well, it's, it's, the, it's the other guy. Then there's another one. Yeah, there's a guy from I, I think uh, um, from the Star Trek movies, and he had a couple other movies. Uh, Anton Yel- Yel- Yelchin. No, it's not. It's not. No, it's someone not, else. No, it was somebody else. It's not. Okay. Um, it's okay. Yeah, I yeah, it's I'm curious to you guys, but we'll figure, we'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three men, three men and a baby. Fake like, news, guys. Fake news. <laughs> three men and a baby. I remember watching that as a kid, and I thought it was so funny. I'm curious again if they're going to keep some of the cast. Maybe. I don't know. They they I only know. gave us a, a a logo. They didn't give us any actors, but I mean, all three of them are still with us. So. Well, it's like what Barton was saying, though. It's been so long since the first Hocus Pocus, it could go either way. And I kind of feel the same way about this. Like, when you have these movies that you're remaking, it's almost like they're doomed to fail. Because people are going to be like, dude, that's not nearly as good as the first one. How can Hocus Pocus 2 compete with Hocus Pocus 1? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, there could be, like, a secret way that the Sanderson sisters come back. That, like, is, like, maybe an amulet or a statue or... Maybe the spell book has something else in it somewhere. Because I don't think that that got destroyed. Can you think of a sequel that was better than the original? Oh, that's... Maybe no. Toy Story? Toy Story. I liked the sequels to Toy Story. They were just as good, I would say, as the original. Toy Story, I think that's... Because everything else has been like... Because hmm. usually, even if it's like an okay story, the animation usually takes like a, a dive. Hmm. Yeah, so that was some of the stuff that got brought up during the Disney um, Investor Conference. So you want to keep your eye out for this type of stuff when the dates are going to be released. The more that Jen and all of us hear about it, we'll make sure that we update you on the shows. Um, do you guys have anything you want to add before we call it for the night? Uh, oh, just really super excited for the FX um, saying that, uh, oh man, it, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is getting four more seasons. I think I love that show. they mentioned they're going to try to tie because it'll be like 18 seasons. I think they're trying to tie for like the record. Oh, and wow. then uh, the aliens uh, TV series for FX also where they're on earth. I never got into that series. I, I just, it never really hooked me. What R- Ripley? Mm-mm. Really? Mm-mm. I don't know. Is it Gordon? Is it Weaver? Right. Is it Weaver? Is it Like, yeah. Her, she was such a badass in like the original trilogy. I was like, "Oh, she's awesome!" Like battling these aliens, and then that second or third one where she's in that like mech suit, where she's like, "Get away from her, you!" And then she like goes <laughs> after her. Like, I think they scared me too much. Maybe I should watch them again. Give them another go. Watch them with a brand new lens and just try to see it for what it is versus being terrified. Well, I imagine how scary it would be to have an alien inside of you, and like you know it's there. And then it like punches through your chest. Like that was like, yeah, I was terrified as a kid. As an adult, I was like fascinating. I, I, I never got into them. I never got into the movie. That's what I was saying too. I just, yeah. I never got hooked by them. So it's like, yeah. maybe we should watch them again, Lucy. We'll make that our homework. We'll go back yeah. and give them another yeah. go, I guess. We'll see. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful for the series. We'll, we'll see where it takes us. Yeah. Oh, you All right. Well, very the, good. You know, from, it, the one that I was confusing, his name is Thomas. The, from the the books, Thomas, uh, Thomas, he, I think he was he goes and monsters or something like that. Thomas. Yeah, it's a, it's it's um the guy from Star Trek also. He he, he was He's in, also from Th- Star Trek. Yeah, that that Thomas movie, it's really cool. So in the movie, he like sees dead people sort of and creatures and he fights them. Um, yeah, but now, then you know also, you know you know you know what I'm talking about now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anton Yelchin. Oh, yes. In real life. Our producer is giving us a big yes. Okay, okay then. You see? Yeah, that, okay. that movie you're talking about was really, really good. People should see it. I think he was a great actor. We, if he didn't, it was a really, it's a horrible accident that how, how he died. Really horrible. Um, it was an accident. But like, uh, he he was so talented and like, yeah. from what I've heard, was nice. Right? And like, oh man. Hmm. Yeah. Thomas Perry? Is it that? Anton, That's Anton, the name of the book? Uh, Anton. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Thomas, doing it now. I'm Sorry. doing it now. I'm uh, is it Odd, Odd Thomas? Is it Odd Thomas, yeah. Odd Thomas? And then he was in the Star Trek movies? Yep, that's him. Oh, okay. 
yeah yeah Thank there you, you go uh, and it was killing me like trying to remember what was his freaking name yeah he's super talented. Uh, okay i was confused. i, I kind of remember like, hearing yeah. about this yeah okay there it is yeah yeah it was killing me so, okay <laughs> that's easy to get Percy that mixed Jackson. up with percy jackson though i mean you know, like, you kinda, yeah, you know. yeah i can see it mm -hmm. um so the next show you guys are going to want to make sure that you subscribe to the page so that you get live notifications or notifications when we go live because the next one we are going to be discussing video games old school new school we're going to dive into it we're going to pull in all the crossovers that you see in the comic book world so it's going to be a fun episode follow the page follow us on instagram follow us on twitter um and make sure that you check out lucy's youtube channel she was saying earlier when we were talking to megan that she has the coolest show she interviews people that have dealt with uh what ghosts. would you call it ghosts paranormal stuff paranormal yeah so just search Mama Comic on YouTube and you can find her channel and subscribe to that. It looks like you got a new subscriber tonight, Lucy. I did. That is so cool. <laughs> that was so cool. I didn't want to push it like that, but I'm like, mm, I, you know, I... <laughs> Why not? She <laughs> said she was into horror so... stuff. Yeah. 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 There you are. <laughs> But yeah, make sure you check that out. Um, okay, so we will be back next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and have a great night.